So, good morning. I am glad that you guys joined me. This is Duncan Welder. I neglected the introduction earlier. Wanted to uh, spend a few minutes this morning stepping through a couple of new pieces that are really exclusive to the learner side of the world. Uh, the first one is dashboards, and dashboards are something that talked about a lot, um, but I've seen some dashboards if you were at the user conference this last year. A um, couple nice things. We're going to start rolling them out in the next couple of weeks. We've been, been using them in a test environment for a pretty good while now to give some, well, some accurate, some high level, uh, quick view data inside learner, some of that student focus, but the majority of that really supervisor focused. Um, it's one of those things that, that I certainly see continuing to expand. Um, the dashboards have been nice to get the first one done. You say, gosh, you know, I like this data too, and, and what about this, and what about this? So this is a good opportunity um, on this uh, this call is as we get to the end and we get into question and answers, gosh, I'd love to have your feedback on what kind of data is important to be able to see in a in a snapshot there. So look forward to that feedback. Um, if you have 7.0, which I know a number of you at this point do, then um, we'll be able to roll dashboards directly and there's not any downtime. It's not an upgrade, anything there. The other thing I was going to, <clears throat> or I am going to show you this morning, are course ratings. Now, course ratings are really a 7.1 feature, are going to be uh, out in production here in the very near term. We're going to give you kind of a technology preview, something that's that's being worked on there, and I think it complements very well some of the competency management functions and personal development plans that came out in 7.0. So I am in the learner system or a demo learner system, and I'm going to hit my learner. You guys have all seen this. Um, to this point with the new to-do list and, and those things. What I'm going to do is click on my dashboards here at the bottom. I'm coming in to a completely empty dashboard page, uh, just like I would have if I, if I turned the system on today and hadn't had anything set up, because they really are unique to the user, the person that's sitting in the desk and what he or she wants to see. Um, you see across the top, I have five pages now of Dashboards I can put on, and, and these are all requirements. I'll show you those things. I'm here on page one, but page two looks the same. Page three looks the same as well. Uh, right now, it shows that my view is normal. If I use that drop down, I have a couple options there. I can choose widgets, I can edit my layout, or I can clear that particular tab. Um, and I'm going to start off with choosing my widgets. So I have a left column, I have a right column, I have a place where I can change my tab name, and I'm going to call this my self-overview. And then I have a place where I can pick student widgets, and see that's what's selected now, so you see those student widgets at the bottom, or if I pick supervisor widgets, I see those, and quite a few more supervisor widgets, and again, I think these are going to continue to expand, but right now, I'm really starting out with 10 uh, dashboard widgets. I'll go back to those student widgets. I'm going to put a couple of these in my left column. I'll hit add there. I'm going to add, take a couple of those, or take that last one, and put it in my right column. Now, these are all student widgets, so there's stuff that has to do with me as a, as a learner. If I want, I could go ahead and oh, not apply my... Um, to apply my, my label there. I could switch this back up to normal, and that will populate those dashboards. This edit layout function um, just gives me a little bit of control over the way these things look and feel. So if I hit edit, I could change the actual title. So instead of my in-progress training, I could call this you know, stuff I've started and um, leave that as my label, or, you know, classes I'm scheduled to attend, whatever we're the cases there, border style, do I want the title or do I want the border? And not, not super critical in my mind there, but I'm going to just say okay, and I'm going to switch this to the normal layout. What that's going to do, go ahead and populate those dashboards. And again, these are the things that are unique to me, and I have my screen going up a little bit to make it a little more legible for 
you guys, um, which means I've got some scrolling here. The first one is my schedule, and, and it's just that. It gives me a quick view at what I am registered to attend, and I can float over any one of those courses in the scene that shows my planning for employee advancement. Uh, they're on the 13th, and then um, substance abuse on the 21st, and if I want to page forward, I can see that I've got forklift inspector training on the 3rd. It gives me those times. If I want, I can drill down into my schedule. There's that go to my schedule link, which looks and feels just like hitting my schedule over on the left, and it gives me the action. So in these cases, since I'm already scheduled, I could cancel out of those sessions because the substance abuse course has a pre-class lesson. I could resume that. And if I had any uh, course links or session links, I could access those. So in this case, you know, I have a map to the training facility, uh, which is actually a map to a, a good sushi place in, in Houston here. Um, but just a a lesson link, or a, sorry, not a lesson link, but a, but a course link, a session link. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my dashboards there. Uh, the others that I have, my in-progress training, and again, works just like going to my in progress training tab here, except I'm, I'm just looking at the first five items. I can hit more and it will take me in. Let me see all those guys. Um, if you haven't looked at this page recently, something that's relatively new here is this next lesson page. So um, if I have a bunch of evaluations that I need to knock out or I have a bunch of tests I need to knock out, I can see those versus what is, you know, just sitting in a document phase, and I have my resume option there. If I go back, that third student option is really just a regeneration of my to-do list, so no different than the to-do list that shows up on the um, uh, My Learner page by default when you come in, you don't have anything uh, defined. So, again, from a student perspective, it's just a quick list of things that I may want to see, be aware of, want in front of me, um, so I can manage my own training. I think the, the real power in the dashboards is when you get into the supervisor function. So I'm going to click on page two. I'm going to leave that cell phone up. I'm going to follow a similar process, and I'm going to choose widgets. That's what I might call my, you know, all students view and apply. So I, change my tab. Now I'm going to hit supervisor widgets. And I have um, seven of those, so more than I'm going to stick on <clears throat> on one page. So I'm only going to put a couple of, in each column. But here I might want student completions per month, training hours, and put those over my left column. I'm going to grab my average training hours per student just so I can see the difference there. Um, and my logons and page views in my right column, and we'll take a look at the experience that I've neglected in just one second. But if I hit Add to those guys, again, I have the same function here where I could edit the layout for them to change what those things were called, give them a more intuitive name for me. I'm going to hit Normal, and it's going to go out, pull that information forward. So a couple things here. Student completions by month, just that. How many training events were completed by students? Um, and this is broken up by week. You can see that uh, 2013 is in blue, 2012 is in yellow. So if I want to go back and say look at October and see what happened there um, versus going back to September and see what happened there. Again, forgive my demo data where I don't have a huge amount of 2012 training, but I go back to October where I've got a little, little volume of training. So number of courses completed by students that month. And I have these filters at the bottom where I can say, just show me my admin department or just show me my production department, um, again, HSC area. Um, I can basically pick which of those groups I want to report on. If I float over, it's going to tell me that that's uh, two completions per month, one completion, one completion. Um, hopefully, I have more completions than that in your production system, as opposed to average training uh, hours per student. So here I have this organized by quarter now. 
So it's showing fourth quarter 2012 had an average of 17 hours per student, and fourth quarter 2013, not finished yet, had an average of seven hours per student. But it lets me go through and say, you know, gosh, you know, in the first quarter of, of last year, students went through about three hours of training. But this um, year, in the first quarter, they went through 15 hours of training. You know, what caused this, this giant jump? I have a couple different grouping options here. I can do this by month, so it changes from a quarter to a monthly basis. I can also change my filter to by the year. I just want to, to see an aggregate number there. But I like the quarter. In this case, it gives me, um, gives me good information. I also have those same filtering options. So if I want to look at the admin department versus the production department, what were those? Um, average student totals. What was the burden that was that was put on on students for each of those groups? It's a little different than the training hours for the year. So this is looking at an individual student and dividing uh, the number of hours received by the total number of students. This is showing me an aggregate number of training hours for a year, and that's why I hope this will set up with um, a by the month kind of kind of um, grade versus the by the quarter that I used up here. I still have the same filtering function, so I can look at the admin department versus the production department in this case, or go back and look at all and see <clears throat> kind of comparison this year versus last year for each of those. Something that's nice on this particular um, this particular dashboard, and I've seen it on a couple of the others, that are in there, so try to include it as, as much as possible. If I want to see, gosh, you know, what made up the 45 hours of training in February, I can click on that bar and I can see essentially a spot report here. This is there's an hour of procedure review, an hour of, of SCORM testing, an hour of, of um, or four hours of SCORM testing, um, three hours of accounting training, and I can move through, you know, really any of those months and get that same kind of spot report. You guys have been on these sessions before, know that I use this model as a test employee a lot. So um, end up with a lot of, of logins by that one particular person. Um, and again, more and more places where we can do it, I want to be able to give you that information as a drill down. Because if I go and I change over to the uh, admin department, now when I grab you know, June of last year, I'm only going to see the people in the admin department. In this case, they all went to six hours of Microsoft Office training, which gives me that grand total. So, unbounce. Back to all there. And the last widget that I put on this page um, is one that I've really never had a good default report out of VTA to get. And the questions come up a number of of times and say, how do I find out who's logging into the system and how often they're using the system? So you see that I've got my, um, my vertical bars here, and then I have this, um, uh, this red line that goes through. The vertical bars, if you can read that legend, is the number of logons in that particular, um, in this case, day, looking at days of the month, and my total count up the side, and then the red bar is the average page views. Now, this is only kept for the last 60 days, but this is lots and lots of page views inside the system. Um, but if I float over any one of those guys, I'll say I'm looking at, at the 11th, and it shows that I have 51 unique logins. If I, I'm um, sorry, 51 uh, uh, hits there. 11th or not. There's my... 12th, sorry, I'm trying to, trying to grab my, my correct date here. Um, oh, oh well, I was trying to, to get one that had more than one person logging in. Again, I use this system a lot for, for Richard Arno, but I can see the number of times we've logged in and the total number of, of pages viewed there. So, um, again, a way to break that, that information down. Pull it, pull it up, and if I want, I can go backwards through my um, through my months, see different different spans of time in that in that same grid. So um, I bounce through and look at 
at September. And who's logged in there? Hey, look at that. I get somebody or a day with more than one person logging in. But the number of times they've logged on and then the number of pages totally viewed there. Um, again, just letting me see what my volume is inside the system. Uh, and I've really been surprised by this. Um, found a number of groups where the, um, the average has been in excess of 200 individual student logons per day, which surprised me, uh, or did surprise me a bit. Uh, so there's my, uh, you know, another example where I've got more than one, more than one person on a particular day. So these, I'm going to leave all these filters set to all, and what I wanted to do is open up this next page and show you those three items that I had neglected. Uh, so if I choose widgets again, I'm going to choose my supervisor widgets. I'll grab my training charges and my in-progress aging, add those to my left column. I'm going to grab my schedule training and add that to my right column. And this time, I might call this just my admin department um, to give that a title. Now when I change it back to my normal view, let me first show you what's included here. So this is training charges. and I know some people live and die by the training cost. Other groups never touch it at all. But if you wanted to see or make a comparison, say, month to month, August 1st of September 2012, 2013, um, I can go in and look at those numbers. Again, it says click bar for detail. So over on the right-hand side, if I want to see where those charges came from, like a $50 charge for new employee orientation, employee handbook um, for all those students, if I want to look at another span, I can see here in conservation with its, with its charges going through. I still have my group by, so month versus quarter. Maybe I'm keeping a quarterly budget. I want to see those things. Again, still have the drill down ability. It just changes my time span. And I have filters at the bottom. So if I want to look at administration department or all, um, it might change those those numbers going through. In this case, I'm going to leave this as the admin department uh, for fun here. Again, my scheduled training, I'm going to bounce this up to all so I get a little more data to start with. What this is going to show me is the number of students uh, for the group that I'm supervising that is scheduled for training each day of this month. And again, if I float over one of those points and says, a data point for details on the side. I can see that in this particular case, I just had Richard Arno in for a course. Here, I had nine students. They were all going to plan for employee advancement. I have for me, this this group is ten students that are going on this additional day. Um, so I can see all those guys. And if I do change this back to the admin department, it can change my my peaks, if I change it down to production, I can do the same thing there. And in this case, I'm going to leave it on admin as well. If I scroll down and look at this very bottom area, this is my in-progress training. So it looks a lot like um, uh, just a, a standard pie chart. If I grab that far, all I can see now 45% or 90 plus days past due. Um, 37% or less than 30 days has to, and I have my other wedges here. I can use the same filter, so in this case, if I move it over to production, I say, gosh, you know, who in production is, is more than 90 days past due? I can click on that section, and I can see the students, the course, um, when it was started, and then their status. I said past due, really, it's, it's in progress. So when it was started, and uh, their status going through, what lessons they have remaining out there. So, again, just drilling down into my in-progress training. I'm going to switch this back to my admin department and really just use that as a, as a quick example of uh, and take a look at one more tab here. So if I hit my page uh, four, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those exact same widgets that I just used on the last page. So my training charges in progress uh, aging, I'll put in the left column, and then my uh, 
and my schedule training, I'm going to put in the right column. This time, what I'm going to do is change my tab name to Production Department and hit Apply because what I can do is when I go back to my normal view, I'll just set my filters now for production, for production, and for production. And because you know these tabs are, are unique to me and I, I create those guys, I can leave and come back and have a quick view of admin department versus production department, whatever specific filters are important to me there. Maybe I want to change this to month so that they so that they match and I can make a quick comparison. But again, have my all student information and then my uh, my self overview. So just a way to step through setting up all of those widgets, drilling down into those guys. Um, gosh, and that's really all there is to the dashboards. Um, I see certainly more and more of these guys coming to light. I know that the one thing that you probably notice is, is neglected here are any real dashboards around training requirements, and that's because um, doing some work on the back end to improve the speed of those guys. One thing you'll certainly notice if I grab you know all the amount of time it takes to populate that grid is a little bit longer than if I choose you know maybe a smaller group like a department. Um, requirements a lot of processing on so really trying to streamline those um, queries to get that data out more quickly and make these you know populate fast so that they really are quick view and not, not painful to have populate. So um, an overview of dashboards, um, if you're in 7.0 interested, uh, can run these guys out, roll these guys out, really straight to do it over the next couple weeks. doesn't require a downtime. It's just configuring your learner system to use those. The other thing that I was going to show you while I'm just Essentially, a technology preview is course rating. So let me start off over in my history. Um, so probably a new page, one that you have not seen to this point, where you see over to the right you have these you know, one to five star course ratings. Now a couple things are configurable inside the system. One, how far back in my history can I go? for courses I want to rate. And I have this one set where I can go back for um, a couple of months here. So that's why you see if I wanted to change a rating, it's a little rating. I could, could do that on these guys um, up here at the top of this, of course, but I haven't yet rated. I can, can go in and do that. The other thing is there are some courses you see that are blank out to the right because on a course-by-course -course basis, you'll be able to pick whether you want to display ratings or not. Um, some things, you may not be able to do anything valuable with that information, and you don't want to um, to show those rankings, and that's perfectly fine and understandable. Um, you do get to see those a couple places. If I go to my plan, um, and I'm going to click on my learner administrator um, course here, when I go to my course description page, I can see that it's been... Um, rated four times, and if I float over, it'll show that I have a four and a half rating. If I search my course catalog for fire courses, I can see the ratings and the number of those. I think the place where the real value is is, is for courses that are not um, necessarily requirements, and I think that's where it ties in very well with things like competencies. So if I want to um, go in and I say, look at my uh, workplace effectiveness courses on teamwork, and, and I'm a supervisor, I'm going to assign that course uh, on a personal development plan for a student. You know, it may be important to me when I look at active listening and say, okay, it's got a four-star rating by the people who've attended it um, with only four ratings, um, and here managing conflict. Again, a four-star rating, but it's 17 people that have provided that feedback um, to this point. So, again, 
something that, that everyone's going to use, probably not. Um, but as you're doing more and more of those optional developmental kind of items and incorporating those into VTA, I think a real uh, valuable function there. This is something that's going to be included in the course catalog report as well. Uh, so once 7.0 rolls out, or I'm sorry, 7.1 rolls out and has this function fully incorporated, uh, you'll see a couple places for those. There will be a checkbox on the course page that says, do you allow ratings? And then for each of those, um, uh, uh, for each of the courses, when I run a course catalog report, I can choose to to include those ratings. But again, certainly see it as something beneficial when you get into those making those selections and really providing supervisors with more of the tools to make training assignments. Um, and again, for other things, I think, gosh, you know, you have to go to um, oh first aid training every year uh, or fire signature training every year and there's a single provider there, um, it may not make sense to, to open those ratings up. But another tool in the toolbox that is out there. Um, with that, a couple of the, the items that are out there wanted to show you this morning. We've been at it about half an hour. What I was going to do is go ahead and open up the phone lines and get your feedback, input, questions, um, and really let you guide us through some uh, question and answer there. So let me unmute everyone real quick and just let me know if you do have any questions. Right. Oh, come on, someone has to have feedback on something. Hi, this is Patty. Um, just wanted to know when will seven one uh, come out? Uh, seven one should be early part of next year, um, and that's when we'll see the the course rankings. Uh, so the dashboards say any time in the next couple of weeks we'll start start rolling those out. Uh, that's really seven seven zero. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. All right. Well, I sure appreciate everyone's time. A couple things before I uh, close out the call. Like all the rest of these webinars, um, they're saved out on the RISC YouTube page. So if you know somebody that missed or you want to come back and, and see something, um, don't hesitate to hit it. If you've not hit that page, there's a ton of good information out, little two-minute, four-minute training segments on uh, things like setting up supervisors and doing one progress training and uh, adding areas and subjects to the course catalog. So uh, if you haven't taken a look at that, I'd encourage you to do it. If you have anybody else on your team that you think would like to join this uh, same session on dashboards and course ratings, we're holding one next Tuesday uh, at 3 in the afternoon Central Time. And I really, really do encourage your um, feedback back would, in, would, would appreciate uh, any input that you have on additional dashboards, information that you'd like to see in the system because it's that feedback that, that helps us improve the system every iteration.